And Ag Days, Michelle Rugg joins me here at Commodity Classic. And Michelle, farmers and ranchers in the panhandle are going to need a lot of help. And you've talked to some of the folks that are here and in charge of making sure that they get it. Yeah, Clinton, this is the largest wildfire that they've ever had in the state of Texas. But USDA has already started their response plan, including disaster assistance and crop insurance claims for grain and livestock producers. Now, top USDA officials tell me here they're going to work as fast as possible to get help out to the producers that need it the most as the disaster total accumulates. The devastation and loss tied to the Texas wildfires continues to mount. While Texas Ag Commissioner Sid Miller says they're finally getting a break in the weather to help contain the fire, it's already the largest fire in the history of the state. Well in excess of uh, over a million and a half acres uh, uh, easily. Uh, this thing may end up being close to two million acres. Uh, so it's 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 huge. The largest fire we'd had prior to this was uh, 900,000 acres. So this is quite, almost one and a half times the size of that. So it's 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 pretty devastating. Miller says feedlots and dairies are unscathed. However, while it will take a week to 10 days to compile total losses, it has been devastating to cow-calf producers in the panhandle. We can count the number of dead, but there's a lot of uh, cattle that will have to be euthanized. Uh, mama cows, you know, have their hooves burn off and their their udders burn. Uh, we'll have to euthanize those. The calves won't be able to nurse if the calves made it through. But I can assure you it'll be tens of thousands of, of head of cattle. That's a highly concentrated area of the state for cattle. He says they have a hay hotline, his star or state of Texas agriculture relief fund, and agri stress hotline for mental health assistance or suicide assistance. USD is also gearing up to help. FSA Administrator Zach Ducheneau says they have several programs available, including the Emergency Conservation Program to restore fencing and water. Livestock losses will be covered by the ELAP and LIP programs. We also have the Livestock Indemnity Program, which unfortunately is going to be a prevalent uh, need up there. Documentation is important, but producers should bring in whatever they've got and we will work with them to make sure that we help them document their losses. We've also got the emergency assistance for livestock, honeybees, and farm-raised fish program. We call it ELAP. We've done some tremendous enhancements with ELAP in the last couple of years. And he says they hope to get that assistance out in a timely manner. Our goal is still to get the assistance out to the producers, especially the lip assistance, so that they can think about replacing that stock the ELAP assistance so that they can think about hauling that stock to where the feed might be, bringing in feed from other places. Marsha Bunger with the Risk Management Agency says FSA programs will work together with Livestock Revenue Protection or LRP to cover losses for the producers that purchase those insurance policies. Depending upon the level of coverage, it could greatly impact your indemnity losses because that product was stood up basically for loss of weight but it also had that feature in there that if that, if that calf was reported, um, it's part of the loss calculation. And Bunger says this coverage was also extended to weaned calves, which will be invaluable for these types of livestock losses. It was a pilot in four states, including Texas. And so if you were um, an individual entity that purchased that weaned calf, please remember that these death losses um, also, if you reported that, that calf prior to this fire, that that will be part of your calculation for the indemnity. And while the wheat damage is minimal, crop insurance will cover any fall crop losses. Both officials say producers should reach out to their local USDA offices to get help documenting all their losses so they get the maximum assistance available. I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Day.